the boys are going to come a little bit later on this morning and help us get this on board but while it's here on the dock side I want to uh, open it up so I can actually see what sort of size it is because we've got to find somewhere on board that we can store this bad boy find somewhere on board that we can store this bad boy and it's got to be somewhere handy for us to refill tanks so let's find out what size it is it doesn't look that much smaller on the inside of the box <laughs> this is our extension hose for our air, air intake because it's a petrol driven compressor obviously it's going to be giving off fumes so we put the air intake as far away from the engine of exhaust as possible because we don't want those exhaust gases going into the air mix that goes into our dive tanks. So, very important. So it's actually a very simple setup. Petrol driven engine provides the power for the compressor to compress the air. And um, basically it's a single tank that can be filled at any one time. And this uh, particular compressor is rated to uh, fill a 11.1 litre tank in approximately 20 minutes. So if the two of us go out on a dive, by the time we've got back on the surface, um, stripped our gear off, filled both tanks again, you're looking at an hour and a half surface interval. So on a fairly shallow first dive, we'd be able to go out for a second dive fairly quickly after filling the tanks up. That's great. A final decision on where the compressor was going to live has been made simply due to logistics. Um, the original plan was to store it in this locker at the back here, but unfortunately, uh, it, although it's, it's, it's certainly deep enough to um, house the compressor, it's simply not wide enough to um, allow us to get our hands in there on either side and lift out the compressor easily. It's just uh, very difficult to access this locker here. So an executive decision was made and now the compressor lives in this locker down here. Now of course all we've got to do is decide where this lot's going to live. <laughs> it's musical lockers once again. Monday night nine o'clock and for a couple of days we've been having a smell in the fridge and we thought at first it was like a leaking um, fishy kind of thing that we'd bought like octopus or bocadones and then we sort of like ate all of the fishy stuff and the smell's still in there and the smell's getting worse so there's obviously something in the fridge freezer that's gone off and it's very rank so now at nine o'clock on Monday night, we've got to empty the freezer, empty the fridge, and it looks something like that. Now, down in the bottom of the freezer, there is two drain holes. We've taken the plugs out, but because of the way the boat's lying at the moment, it's not draining out completely. So now I've got to use this and a sponge and suck all that scummy sh water out of the bottom. It's a horrible job, but someone's got to do it. And thankfully, it's Baz. One of the reasons Baz is actually cleaning out the fridge is because it's a very deep chest freezer and I can't actually reach the bottom of the fridge <laughs> and he's taller than I am so he's doing it. <laughs> it's uh, almost like a ballet movement there Baz, what do you call that? This is the, uh, the Baz ballet move. Right. It's a specialist move. It takes years of training. Yeah, I can tell. Uh -huh. This is the first uh, batch of, of liquid that I pulled out, which is obviously not clean.
Right, so now it's clean in there. Does it smell? Well, do you want to stick your head in? No, it still smells. empty box that's going in why is that an empty box going in this is an empty box going in because it sits underneath the fruit and veggie bag which is a cooler bag and most of the fruits and veggies go in the bag because when we have the element turned really cold to keep the meat and the fish as close to freezing as we can we have to put other stuff in there otherwise that freezes as well and then it is just destroyed but it's too low down if we just put it straight into the bottom of the fridge so this is a builder upper and what we've found is is that it's really no point putting anything in here because it's just a pain in the backside trying to get it out so it's empty let's just chuck on okay just stuff you want to be doing at nine o'clock on a monday night <laughs> probably nine nine thirty ten o'clock now yeah Oh yes, it's getting to twilight. It must be closer to 10. That's the trouble because it's such a deep fridge. You can't, you know, like with a norm, normal fridge, you can kind of like look, look at all the different levels on all the shelves. Because it's a deep chest fridge, things could die down there, like, and you know. Be lost for a decade. Lost in some black hole. <laughs> Unhappy. I'm happy with that. I think that's as good as it's going to get. Right. Certainly so clean. that goes in. That's our freezer box, technically. Right. All right, so let's pop that down there for now. And this um, apricots. Uh, that's that's it. everything. Yeah, let's get the lid down. All right. <sighs> Done. Okay. But there's no fishy sp yeah, it's on us, it's on us now. <laughs> yeah, it's spread. We're done. We're done. <laughs> There's nothing worse than a smelly fridge, especially when it's as deep as that one. But I think we sussed it out. Nothing had really gone bad. It was just that we had a bag of octopus that we bought that had a tear in the plastic. And when it kind of defrosted, the octopus juices leaked all through and, and made it, it smell very bad. But it's good now! Yesterday we went through the eight life jackets that had been left on the boat from the previous owners to see if they're still usable. But what I did was, uh, before we threw them away, we salvaged them for lots of useful things like the plastic clips and the straps. And I also took the reflective strips off them and I've got a whole heap of them here because there were lots of reflective strips on them and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them onto the life boys I'll show you so we've got two of these babies and these are really important obviously and the life boys have got reflective strips on four places around them it's starting to not be reflective so what I thought that I would do is I would stick these onto here and then these are good to go again then all we've got to do is thread line on these which we've ordered so the first job is to wipe the old reflective strips clean I'm using white spirits to clean the original reflective strips that I'm leaving on the life boys so that the glue sticks really well and I've got some contact gel this sets in 15 minutes and it's um, slightly flexible and it's also good in water so that's basically it's quite an easy job childproof lock <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so we've got the reflective strips on and the last thing that we have to do is feed this rope through these holes so that if we do have to throw it overboard to somebody, they've got something to grab hold of. We've got a little bit of rope here. <laughs> It's not just for this project, it's for other things that we're going to need. So let's see how it works. I was talking to Baz and, and he was saying, you know, if we do get rings in the future, we won't get the hard ones, because I mean, the <laughs> there'd be nothing worse than throwing out a life ring to someone and knocking them out as it hits them. <laughs> So see that? That really does hold it in place, look. So I'm really yanking on that. So when this is looped here and somebody pulls on it, it's not all gonna pull out, so that's really good. Do stop a knot. I'm just measuring how much I need and then giving myself enough to do the stop a knot. Cut it about here. So last little bit. So we've got our newly revamped Life Boy with its new reflective strips and its new grab rope and two awesome stopper knots. <laughs> there we go. Look at the dirt. They came down with the rain <laughs> the other day. You'd think that rain would clean the boat, wouldn't you? But no. Just shows how much dust there is in the atmosphere. Look at the solar panels. They're meant to be like shiny. That's all dust. Even the underside of the bimini has got dust that's seeped through with the rain. <sighs> it's gonna need a good scrub. is coming here and we've been leaving the hatches open for airflow but that means we're being bombarded by buzzing biting mosquitoes and that's just not on. A couple of weeks ago we found an insect screen that attaches around the hatches with velcro and that's working very well but we have one big problem the companionway or front door. Velcro insect screen just isn't made to be opened and closed regularly, so we looked for another solution. We discovered Insect Stop, which has a frame and attaches around a window with a magnetic strip. So we got that and I spent most of the day changing the design to fit our L-shaped companionway. This is how I did it, with a lot of help from Baz. if we've got enough magnetic strip <laughs> otherwise we'll have to go to plan B. So you've got one insect screen, you've got magnetic strips and PVC edging and corners and joining bits. This is a diagram of the actual shape as I look at it from the inside of the boat. So this is the top, the roof part and then where it bends and comes um, down the stairs and this is sort of the bottom edge. So I think the sides 
need to be unbroken and if I have to join any then I'll make it the top part here and the bottom part there. The issue that we have now is this roll is 120 centimetres long and the actual length that we need is 130, 135 centimetres. So what we're going to do is fit it and keep as much on one edge as I can because hopefully that will give me enough to place down at the bottom. took longer than we expected. I'm really glad though that we've done it. As you can see it's in place. It just magnetises on and it's a thing of beauty isn't it? Look at that. No mosquito is going to get past that barrier. Because San Javier Airport is to the south of the marina we're staying at, we're walking north along the beach to try and put as much distance between us and the airport as possible. I know that the flight path goes directly over the marina, um, but I just want to be extra cautious and get as far away from that flight path as possible. Join us next Saturday on Sailing ABC as we take our Mavic Pro out for its first test flight and we test some of our personal safety gear. If you like our video do give us a thumbs up and share with your friends because it really helps us out. If you haven't already subscribe and press the bell icon next to the subscribe button and you'll be notified of future videos.